All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today I bought something very interesting. In fact, I didn't realize you could pick these up so cheaply. It must be the cheapest example in the UK. What I've bought is a Range Rover Autobiography 4.4 litre turbo diesel, the new shape one, the L405, for just £18,500. How cheap's that? I haven't seen this yet, but I've had a pretty thorough description of it. I bought this from a car trader friend of mine, and usually his descriptions are pretty, pretty bob on. He called me up, I think knowing full well that I'm a sucker for a Range Rover, and he said, right, I've got a 2012 4.4 litre autobiography Range Rover here for 18 and a half grand. So straight away, I thought that was a, a last of L322. So I thought, sounds a bit dear that. He was describing it to me. He said, it's got the 22 inch turbine style wheels, deployable side steps. And I was thinking, that doesn't sound like an L322. He said, it's in October or November, 2012. It's the first, first, first of the new shape. So I thought, right, that sounds like a bargain. How could I say no to that? It's basically, to all intents and purposes, the same car as this, only £60,000 cheaper. No brainer. Now, if you'd have asked me how much that was worth off the top of my head, I would have said 22, 23 grand. So 18.5 just seems like the bargain of the century. Let's go and have a look then, shall we, at what I think is possibly the cheapest L405 in the UK. Well, we're here. I'm really excited about that. I can't believe that's 18 and a half grand. That, you know, with a private reg on it, looks like, looks like a 30 grand car. It's a little bit pimp my ride, if I'm honest. It's not my cup of tea. I prefer, I prefer to see silver bits on it rather than black. It's all kind of murdered out, as they say. It does look quite stealthy, though. The wheels need refurbishing. It's got guy salmon plates, so it's a Manchester car originally. Ah, it's got the wooden steering wheel. It's got a dash cam, so the previous owner must have been quite sensible. 18 and a half grand. Someone's put an aftermarket grill on, but I don't hate it. It actually looks okay. Right, let me do a vehicle history check then. As always, I'm gonna use Car Vertical. It's really easy to use. All you do is go to carvertical.com and type in the vehicle reg, which in this case is Mike Tango 62 Lima Tango Juliet. If you wanna do one of these checks, all you need to do is click the link below in the video description and use the promo code HIGHPEAK and you get 10% off each and every vehicle check that you do. This will tell us whether it's ever been stolen, written off, exported, imported, whether it's got outstanding finance on it, all that sort of stuff. And it's really important that you do one of these before you buy a car. Sometimes if a car's been involved in an accident, it shows you the pictures of the damage, which is really handy. I've never seen that before. And just like that, the report is ready. Let's view report then. So, no mileage fraud was disclosed. It's never been stolen, never been involved in any accidents, and there's no outstanding finance. So we're clear on all four fronts. It was registered in January 2013, it shows you all the previous number plates it's had as well. So someone's had different private plates on it over the years. Ah, right. It shows you the maintenance it's had too. So it had maintenance in 2016. Then it was inspected. So it's first MOT, the front brake pads were wearing thin. Let's see if there's any current MOT. Uh, what month are we in? January? Okay, right. So it runs out quite soon. It last had an MOT in February last year. But on the bright side, there were no advisory items. Straight away then I'll give it a service and an MOT and bring that up to date. Now the mileage, I'm sure he said it was 115,000 miles. Well, that would make sense. At the last MOT it had done 107,000 miles. The year before that, 103, 99, 101, 94, so it's all steady. I mean that's a, it's a 10 year old car now that, isn't it? So to have done 115,000 miles, that's about average really. That's interesting, it also provides a valuation. It's suggesting that this car could be worth 24 and a half grand. That's exactly what I thought it would be worth. So it is a 2013 Land Rover Range Rover, 4.4 litre diesel, which is the best engine, apart from the 5 litre. Automatic, all-wheel drive, black. It also tells about the spec as well, so what have we got here that's noteworthy? Bear in mind this is an autobiography, so they come with everything anyway. Headlining, leather, powered tailgate. I think a lot of this is standard, to be fair. Ah, that's clever, right. It's got the photos here from the last time it was advertised. I don't know how it does this. It shows the photographs the seller used last time it was advertised. Oh, it's got a very dark brown interior. I thought it was black. An unusual colour scheme. Oh, it was somewhere called Pavilion Motors who have got 150 cars in stock. A 161 number, that's local then, isn't it? Never heard of them. We've also got a checklist of common issues to look out for. So, DPF regeneration issue may result in oil dilution with fuel. That's a common issue apparently on that engine. And the infotainment system failure. I've never had that to be honest. 
Right, well that's quite handy to know. If you want to do one of these checks, all you need to do is click the link below in the video description and use the promo code HIGHPEAK and you get 10% off each and every vehicle check that you do. Right, let's go and have a look. Okay then, what have we got here? Looks really good that. I think I need my jacket on actually. Quite a cold day. That's better. Well, straight away the wheels need doing. The brake, list look, the brake discs look new though. They must have been replaced recently. But yeah, these wheels, these 22 inch turbine wheels, my second L405 had those. And they're really good looking wheel, but they should be diamond cut. And obviously somebody's just painted them all black. So I might get them done back in their original two-tone color. I think that would look better. What do you think? But bodywork wise, it's quite straight down the panels. Only got one key for it, unfortunately. But we've got the deployable side steps. You can see those hidden away down there. I'm guessing it's Santorini black. They always are. And yeah, new brake discs on the front as well. That's positive. It looks like it could do with a tyre. We've got a little chunk out of the sidewall here. It's a Pirelli though. But it looks a bit old, that. We've only got about 3mm of tread left. What's the back one like? The back one is... Mm, about the same, maybe maybe three and a half mil on the back one. And that is a Continental. Now they should match on each axle, ideally. That looks really cool, you know. I prefer the look of mine, personally, but all blacked out is quite cool. On this side, we've got a... Oh, we've got odd tyres here. That's a Goodyear Eagle. Why do people put odd tyres on a Range Rover? It does look quite nice though with the, the sun shining on it. You can see all the, the bits of glitter in the metallic paint. I think it wants a good buff and clean though. So I think we're into two new tyres. What's on this back one? That's a matching Continental. I think for what it's worth, I might put a set of new ones on it. That's on about three and a half mil. So we're into a grand for tyres. <laughs> they do cost a lot to repair these cars, that's the trouble. So a thousand pounds in tyres and probably four or four fifty in wheel refurbs. But the bodywork looks quite tidy on both sides. There's a tiny little mark here. Only a dent though, I think that'll pop out. Moving around the back, it's an autobiography. Uh, it's missing its A and also its V. So it's a runge ruler. They're probably eBay badges, I'll have to order some more. But the bodywork looks all right. Again, with a good clean and polish. That should clean up well. Okay then, let's have a look inside. Side steps, which are actually working. It is indeed dark brown. Chocolate brown with an ivory, oh, it is the leather headlining. I quite like that, leather and suede. Well, the condition's very good. I mean, bear in mind this is a 10 year old car now. There's a little bit of wear on the buttons here. We've got the nice wooden steering wheel, a little bit of wear on these volume controls, standard stuff. I actually replaced those on my first one. I think they were 60, 70 quid from Land Rover. It's all quite good though. We've got some service history here, which I'll go through in a second. What have we got in here? Some bits of trim, which need to go back. That little thing there, in case you put petrol in your uh, fuel tank. And it, it's got like a shut off thing, so that tool allows you to open it again. What have we got in here? Ah, I'll be keeping those, I think. A little Swiss Army set. What about the top one? Some air fresheners. It smells quite clean, this. I mean, it is quite clean, actually, in general. The back seats look, look like they've never been sat in, actually. And they've got the reclining feature. Nice original mats. The colour combination's a bit, a bit of a choice, but I don't hate it. We've got heated and cooled rear seats. They're lovely these, aren't they? Panoramic roof. 
This of course being an early one won't have the start stop feature so it'll be high tax unfortunately. It also doesn't have the reverse camera scree uh, washer jet thing. Hmm. That needs a little bit of encouragement on this cold morning. Uh, no spare wheel, that's unusual. Got some tyre gunk there and a compressor. Ah right, deployable tow bar as well. Is that going to come out to greet us is it? How do you work that? Ah there we go. How much of a pose is that? My second one had this. Can't beat a little gadget, can you? We'll send that back. Well, that all works, and we've got the parcel shelf, which is all in good order. The more I look at this, the more I think this is a bargain. Uh, oh, we're missing, yeah, we're missing an A there as well. Right, I need to order two new badges for it. Let's have a look under this bonnet. That one's clicking back. This side step works as well. Do the struts work? Ah, yeah. Very good. Can't see an awful lot under here. Everything's covered in plastic covers. Difficult to see anything really, isn't it? This. Well, as far as I can tell, it's all there. Let's have a look at this service history. Right, so this has been done by, ah, I've used them before, JC Motor Services in New Mills. That was around the corner from where I used to be based. So they did a service in September, no, oh, September last year, at 109, and it's currently done 114,139. So slightly less than the 115, I was told. That's good news. Oh, right, you spent some money on this. The last service then at JC Motor Services, uh, on the 23rd of September last year, it had a full engine oil flush, fuel treatment, long life oil, filter, uh, oil filter, air filter, fuel filter, pollen filter, set of front brake pads, front wear sensor, gearbox oil service and filter kit. There's every chance, you know, this previous owner has been, been watching my videos. That's something I'd have done. That was done at 109,000 miles. Also a transfer box service and ancillaries. That was £1,429. Well, that's good to see. In addition to that, was this, oh, this was after it. It had four boost hoses and some fuel treatment and a rad cap and some ancillaries to replace boost pipes and look at water leak. So it must have been leaking water, leaking coolant out of the rad cap. Have ordered Radcat. Okay, right, that was 380 pounds. Oh, wow. Somebody spent a lot of money on this. <clears throat> you ready for this? This was done at 110,000 miles. Two drive shafts, 198 pounds each. Diff oil, thermostat housing and radiator hose, two radiator hoses, front drop links. That's quite common on these, they're a heavy car. Uh, one offside front knuckle, whatever that is, a near side front knuckle. They were 1500 quid alone. ABS sensor, two of, four wheel alignment, antifreeze, and slurries in labour. So the job was to replace drive shafts, diff oil, thermostat housing, and three radiator hoses. Ready for this bill? £3,798. You know, I always say keep a couple of grand back. This is why. This is exactly why. Well, that's all been done 4,000 miles ago. Oh, we've got a spec check here. It must be from when he bought it. The cost new of this car in 2013 was £96,000. £96,890. So it's got the 22-inch wheels, deployable tow bar, privacy glass, full-size spare wheel. That's gone missing. 
and an extra large additional screen wash bottle. Ah, service history, right. So it was serviced at Guy Salmon Nutsford. That's who I use, actually. That was done in 2016. Had another service at 83,000 miles, 2017. Has been looked after then, this, hasn't it? What's this one? This one's been done in Cheltenham. Wonder if they were horsey. I'm thinking Range Rover, deployable tow bar, Cheltenham. That bill was £700. Water pump preheater, special order, and a heater valve. We've got another one here. That was £402. That was a full service and replaced the brake fluid. That was done in 2020. And then we've got all the MOT history. Well, somebody's looked after this, haven't they? Let's fire up. See how many warning lights we've got. Hmm, none. Well, that's not strictly true. My fuel light's on, which is fairly standard for one of these. We've got 26 miles of range, but no warning lights at all. This should have, ah, it's got the dual view as well. That was an option, I think. So the driver can look at the sat nav while the passenger's watching television. Heater controls there. I forget now, there are lots of subtle changes between that and this. I actually prefer the proper buttons you get on here rather than those touchscreen things. I think what we need to do then is take this for a drive. Make sure it kicks down fine, make sure there are no warning lights, all that sort of... I've just spotted there the dual view. Let me show you. So from my side, I'm watching the sat nav. From the passenger side, we're watching Al Jazeera TV. Right, let's take this for a quick drive then and see how it performs. You can't beat the driving position of a full-size Range Rover. You are just the king of the road. I also love the wooden steering wheel. I wish mine had that. Now, if it's had all this suspension work, this should be solid over the bumps. Straight away it feels it. There's a slight sort of creaking noise. I think it might be the parcel shelf. Then again, it is a 10 year old car, I suppose. Well, it pulls well straight away. I've got no warning lights on. No restricted performance lights, none of that. That creaking's irritating. I can't quite believe this is an 18,000 pound car. Oh, she flies. You can't beat the torque you get from the 4.4 litre diesel. Wow, that noise is irritating. What am I going to do with this then? I think straight away, I need to run it down to my mechanics, get them to give it a full service and an MOT. I'll order four tyres for it. I'll get the wheels refurbished. I'll order some new badges for it. What else? What else? I'll ask them to give it a thorough check over while it's having its service and make sure everything else is all right. Ah, then I need to take it to the detailers. Get them to give it a good, clean, but also a proper buff. And I think we've got a 25 grand car here then. My spend, as long as there are no issues that I haven't discovered yet, should be about 18.5 in the car, a thousand pounds on tyres, we'll say five on the wheel refurbs, that takes us up to 20. Five on the service and MOT, that's 20,500. I could have here a nearly 20% profit margin. There might be four and a half grand in this. I think on the forecourt, this looks like a 25,000 pound car. Well, I'm bowled over with the drive of it. I thought, the fact that it's done 114,000 miles, I thought it might be a little bit loose and vague, but it really isn't. I think that parcel shelf needs a bit of adjustment because that noise would drive me mad. I'd have to drown it out with the radio. What a car. Doesn't really drive an awful lot worse than mine, you know. And there's a huge gulf in price. I think then that's about as far as I can go with it today. Let me get it down to my mechanics and we'll see what it needs. I'll catch up with you in, how long shall we give it? Three weeks. We'll give it three weeks and you should see a fully prepared car with a quieter parcel shelf. Right, cheers guys. I'll see you then. Well, what do you think? After just a couple of weeks, it's all done. And I think it looks a million dollars. I know I've said this before many times, but there's nothing quite like driving a full-size Range Rover. They're just the best. I dropped my white one off at Land Rover Nutsford yesterday for an issue that's going to be sorted under warranty. 
The soft close motor on the driver's door stopped working. I know you think it first world problems, but it's meant that I've been without a Range Rover now for 24 hours. So getting back in there, this was a pleasure. And this 10 year old L405, which I think was one of the cheapest Range Rover autobiographies in the whole of the UK, 18 and a half grand. Can't believe it was that cheap. It really doesn't feel a whole lot different from my white one. I think this genuinely looks like a 50,000 pound car. If you were to put a private plate on this, nobody would know. Anyway, let me talk you through what I've had done. Firstly, I took it down to my mechanics for a service, a check over and an MOT. I was going to have a full service done, all the filters and all the fluids, but it had one recently, so I thought that'd be a waste of perfectly good parts. Instead of wasting time and money, I just had a minor service carried out and an inspection and the MOT. I asked them to give it an oil change and just a general check over to see what sort of condition it was in. The next day my mechanic called me to tell me what a nice example it was. It's not the sort of conversation I have every day. There were no issues to report at all, which might sound surprising on a 10 year old Range Rover, but the previous owner of this had spent an awful lot of money in the last 12 months, so I wasn't all that shocked. Next up I ordered four Pirelli Scorpion tyres for it because the old set of tyres were odd and not in the best shape. You're not supposed to run a four wheel drive car on odd tyres, especially one as fragile as a Range Rover. And I think it looks a whole lot better now it's been shod in new rubber. Then I took the car over to Prestige Wheels in Bradbury to have the wheels refurbished. Now if you remember I wanted to have them done diamond cut because I think they look really cool, but Prestige advised against it. They said the wheels at 10 years old had probably been done before and there's a limit to how many times you can do them, so they advised going all black. And that's exactly what happened, so they've been stripped and then powder coated in gloss black. And I think they look really good. I'm not usually a big fan of the blacked out, pimped out look, I think it looks a little bit too, too wannabe gangster, but on the Range Rover I do think it suits it. Then I dropped it off at Tameside Valentin for a full clean and detail, and they spent 18 hours on it doing loads of paint correction. If you look at it before, there were loads of imperfections, loads of small minor scratches and marks, and now it looks like glass. They've given it a mirror finish, they've done a superb job as they always do. In between all this, I ordered two new Range Rover badges because I had a few letters missing. So I replaced the missing letters, and job done. It was kind of like an episode of Blockbuster. Can I have a pee please, Bob? Then I got it back to work and fitted some new reg plates, which as I always say, lifted it straight away. The previous plates on this didn't actually match. The front was from Guy Salmon I think, and the back was from some motor spares shop. Now the front and rear plates match and they look a whole lot better, and I've also gone with a large rear plate. Range Rovers just don't look right in my opinion with a small rear plate, so it's one of the jobs that I always do. And I think, I think that's about it. The thing with Range Rovers though, which probably won't come as much of a surprise, is that you do need deep pockets to run and maintain them. Take this one for example, I think I've gone off lightly with this one because it had a lot of money spent on it recently, and yet I've still spent over £2,000, and I haven't even had that much done to it. Now had there been some serious issues with this, I could have quite easily doubled that spend. So that's my warning to you all, take heed. Generally speaking, if you can't afford to fill the tank, or you wince at the cost of the road tax, then this isn't the car for you. Buy one by all means because they're the best things on the road, but make sure you keep two or three thousand pounds to one side for any possible repairs or maintenance. You will need to do that, I'm not being negative, I'm just being realistic. Let me run you through the cost then for this one. So I paid £18,500 for the car. The mechanical bits, the tyres, the MOT, that cost me £1,242.50. The biggest part of that were the tyres, they were about two fifty dollars each. The wheel refurbs cost me £384 and the badges cost me £52. The number plates cost me £25, that's because the large rear is a bit more expensive than a standard plate. And the valet and detailing cost was £350, which I think was a bit of a bargain considering the amount of man hours involved. That takes my total to £20,553. Such a lot of car for the money, isn't it? This would easily retail for £25,000, but like I said earlier, stick a private plate on this and it looks like it could be worth double that. What I'm going to do with this is put it on the Raffle Shack website so one of you can win this car for just £5. I know a lot of you watching love Range Rovers, which is probably how you found this channel in the first place. So I figured, why not give you the chance to win it for just a fiver? So it's going to be £5 per ticket, and I'll do the live draw on this channel in a few weeks' time. Possibly sooner if it sells out quickly, which I think it will. I'll set a limit to the number of tickets any one individual can buy, so nobody gets themselves in a mess. And I'll also limit the total number of tickets available, so the odds remain good. So check out raffleshackcompetitions.com, select the number of tickets you want, pay for the tickets, answer the question correctly, and keep your fingers crossed. Good luck everybody. Thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, I'll leave the link below. And yeah, cheers guys. See you next time.